All right, guys, welcome back to a new video. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about activation functions. We're going to be talking about what an activation function actually is. And then we'll be talking about the main types of activation functions. And finally, I'm going to show you guys each activation function in code with Python. And we're going to be comparing the actual results. So let's get started. So first of all, what is an activation function? Well, an activation function is just a mathematical function that determines the output of a neural, right? So what, what do I mean by that? Well, in neural networks, we have a diagram kind of like this. We have these different nodes in groups of layers, and these layers are connected in some sort of way. Now, here, each one of these nodes is what we call a neural. So I talk about this a lot in every single one of my videos, at least relating to AI. But a neuron is just a bunch of inputs, at least if we have a, a single perceptron network, right? We're gonna just going to have a bunch of inputs. We're going to have weights, and these lines are the weights, right? We're going to have some sort of way to determine the output, right? Um, and we're going to be using the weighted sum, which is just going to be all the inputs multiplied by the weights added up. And then we're going to have an activation function. Now our activation function is going to take that weighted sum, right? And it's going to optimize it to determine the actual value or output of this neuron, right? So that's why an activation function is so important because it can actually decide whether your neural network is useful, right? So uh, depending on which activation function you use, it can help the efficiency of your model or it can decrease it. And we're going to be talking about each one of these in details so you can actually know which activation function to use for each specific task that you're going to build. So now let's talk about the different types of activation functions. So when you Google up activation functions, you're going to see these four, and I'll talk about the fifth one in, on Google, right? So if you just Google these up, you'll see these. Now, all of these functions are nonlinear, which is going to help when you have more complex models, right? We can't have linear models. Now, um, now, the first type of activation function is going to be called our sigmoid activation function. And our sigmoid activation function is actually an activation function that I used in my last video with GANs. We are trying to determine the output of whether an image is a dog or a cat. Now, this is an example of binary classification. For example, if the output was closer to zero, we determine it as a cat. And if it was closer to one, we'd make it a dog, right? And um, this is useful for sigmoid because it outputs an output between zero to one, right? So um, it's also used for logistic regression, which is essentially taking a value and trying to determine another value based on it. But the main use is binary classification. As you can see, it outputs a number between 0 to 1, as 1 is in the numerator, and the denominator can't be negative, as it's just 1 plus a power, and a power cannot be negative. So our activation function is going to be used in our output layer. All right. One thing you'll notice is these first three activation functions, the sigmoid, the tan h, and the softmax, are all going to be represented by an s on a graph. It's going to look something like this. Um, they will be in different quadrants and different sizes, but just know that they're all represented by an S. I'll show you this in the code. So now let's talk about the tan h activation function. So the tan h activation function is kind of similar to the sig1 activation function in the sense that we're doing e to the power of x minus e to the power of negative x divided by e to the power of x plus e to the power of negative x. Now, Tan H is also going to be used for binary classification, except we're going to be using the tan H activation function and what we call our hidden layers. These are going to be the layers in between our input and our output layer. Now, the reason for this is because its rate of change is going to be uh, much greater, actually four times greater than our sigmoid activation function. All right. So now we know sigmoid and tan H, which are both used to classify, or both used for binary classification. Now let's talk about our softmax activation function, which is actually going to be used in multi-class multi -class classification, right? Now, um, one thing I forgot to mention is 10H also outputs from negative 1 to 1. 
So our softmax activation function. Well, as you can see, it's a little bit different than our tan H and sigmoid, as it's actually going to use every other input in its function, right? And this is why it's going to be useful for multi-class classification. Now, uh, we can see it is also similar to our tan H and sigmoid, as it is having an E of X, right? So it's going to be E of X over the sum of E times X, E times X times I, right? So E to the power of X times I. Now, what's this i? Well, the i is just going to be every other input. So it's going to be e to the power of x, and then you're going to go through every single input times every other input, and um, you're going to get the sum of that. All right. So now we know softmax, tan h, and sigmoid. Now let's talk about ReLU. Now, ReLU is by far probably the most used activation function. Now, it's going to be used for NLP, computer vision, and so much more. Now, the real activation function is actually pretty simple. All we're going to do is we're going to get the maximum of 0 and x. So what this means is if number is negative, it's just going to set it as 0. And if it's positive, it's just going to set it as x. Now, the reason why we have to use ReLU for these tasks is because of the vanishing gradient problem. Now, just know about that problem, as I'll explain it later in this video. All right. So the max of 0 and x can also uh, create a problem. Now, um, I'll show you also this problem in code, but essentially it can, be, it can be caused as there won't be much change as multiple outputs are gonna be output as zero, right? If many are negative. So that's why we can use leaky ReLU. Now leaky ReLU is kind of similar to ReLU, or it actually is really similar, as it's gonna find the maximum of 0.01x in x. Now, what does this mean? Well, basically, if a number is negative, then one hundredth of it is going to be greater than the actual number, right? So instead of adding zero, we're just going to take a really small uh, percent of the number, right? So for example, if we had a number like negative 0 0.8, right, as the weighted sum, then what we can do is we can take one hundredth of that, right? Um, and we'd output one hundredth of uh, 0 0.8 rather than just zero, right? And um, that can help us with some issues that we see with root. So now we know some of the main activation functions and what, when they're used and why they're used. Now let's actually get into the code of each one of these. All right, so um, I just went ahead and coded out each one of these activation functions, our sigmoid, tan h, soft max, reloot, and leaky reloot. And um, I took a data set from my last video uh, with binary cross entropy and the loss function. And um, it just has a weighted sum and the desired output. And all we need for this video is the weighted sum. So we have 0 0.74, 0 0.9, 90, 0 0.98, and 0 0.30, right? And you can create your own data set just to play around with it. And I also added the actual output. So we're going to think of this as a binary classification task, just like in my last video. Um, these won't be as effective for some of these activation functions, and we'll see that later. But basically, I just created a function for each one of these activation functions. So we have our sigmoid, which just can be returning 1 over 1 plus e to the power of negative x, right? Just the exact math function. Then we have tan h, which is going to return uh, e to the power of x minus e to the power of negative x, all divided by e to the power of x plus e to the power of negative x, right? Then we have our softmax, which is, if you remember, e to the power of x over the sum of e to the power of x times i, which is all the other inputs. So what I went ahead and did was created a sum i and then added uh, each one of the inputs times or x, and then I just returned uh, e to the power of x divided by that sum. And then for a relu, it's just easy. It's just the maximum of 0 and x. And our leaky relu is just the maximum of 1 hundredth of x and x. Then I printed out each one of these activation functions for, or each one of these outputs for each one of these inputs of our weighted sums. And again, we're not using our buys. So let's run this and see the outputs. So um, we should have four for each one of these activation functions, and each one of these is just going to be one weighted sum.
So for our sigmoid activation function, what it's doing is it's going to, or for all these activation functions, it's taking it, it's optimizing it, and that's going to be the output of our neuron. So for example, we had the weighted sum of 0 0.74. It took that and it turned it into 0 0.67, right? Now, um, uh, then we have our 0 0.9. It took that and made it 0 0.71, right? And then it took our 0 0.98, it made it 0 0.75. And then for 0 0.3, it made it 0. Point, sorry, for 0 0.3, it made it 0 0.29. So um, we can see a bigger difference in the bigger numbers. So we went from 0 0.98 to 0 0.72, right? Um, and then we also went from 0. Point, wait, actually, sorry, that's for um, our tan H, right? So I'm explaining tan H right now. Uh, we went from 0 0.3 only down to 0 0.29, right? So we can see um, the outputs in our 10H. Now for sigmoid, it's pretty similar, um, except we don't see, we actually see a bigger uh, change in our 0 0.3. So it went from 0 0.3 to 0 0.57. And with our binary classification, that's actually going to change um, the results of that in drawing. Because now in at least our example of dogs and cats, it's going to think this is a dog. Right. And for everything else, um, it's still uh, the output that it was. So then we see for our um, for softmax, we see how the outputs actually changed a lot. So we went from having 0 0.9 to 0 0.3, and we changed all of them uh, except the 0 0.3 from a dog to a cat. Right now. Uh, Conveniently, that's the actual output of each one of these, but um, you can see it's a bigger change uh, because the softmax activation function isn't actually going to be used for our binary classification. Now, um, these outputs don't really have that much significance as I just made up random weighted uh, sums, but if you guys have your own weighted sums that actually uh, mean something with real data, um, you can actually compare these results. I just want to show you the the differences um, between the weighted sum and the output of the activation function. So I just want to show you guys how um, the actual output of the neuron changes, right? So now with our ReLU, we can see that it's pretty straightforward. Um, none of these numbers were negative, so just return the number. Um, I'm just going to make one negative just to show you guys how the um, leaky ReLU works. So we can just say negative for 0.3. Run that, and you can see it just returned negative 0 0.003. All right, so that's how our activation functions work. Now let's actually graph these and see how each one of these look. And what we can do is just print out each one of our graphs, right? So we started off with our sigmoid, um, and these are just random uh, data points, but I just want to show you how it looks. So this is going to be our sigmoid. Um, as you can see, it is an S. Then we can go to our tan H, which should also look like an S. All right, we can just run this. As you can see, it is an S. Then we can go to our softmax. This again is an S, kind of. Um, as you'll see, when the graph extends, this will curve a little bit, so it'll be more. Um, looking like an S, right? And then we have our ReLU. And um, it looks something like this. And as, as I kind of said earlier, um, it kind of looks linear for part of it, right? Uh, but it isn't. Now we have our leaky ReLU. And this looks really similar to our um, normal ReLU uh, because we're only showing one quadrant. Um, if you expand this graph, you will see the actual leak in the graph. All right. So um, those are activation functions. Now we've actually figured out the math behind them. We figured out when to use them. We've coded out each one of these. Now we've actually seen the visual representation of each one of these activation functions.
All right, guys, so that's it for today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys did, please make sure to hit a thumbs up on the video. And if you have any questions, you can put them down below. I'll put the code on GitHub, so if you want to just copy and paste it and see the results for your own data or just for yourself, you can do so. But anyways, thank you guys for watching this video. And until next time, 